Beware the Blob by Richard Clare, Jack Woods, and Tony Harris. Shooting script, second draft, 10 February, 1971. Based upon the copyrighted screenplay, Son of Blob, and the copyrighted photoplay, The Blob. Fade in, exterior, Hargis House, day, full shot, Samuel the Cat. Samuel lounges among the flowers, rolling and frolicking in the sunlight. Chester, did you get the salmon eggs? Marion, yes, dear, I had to go to three places to find them, but I got you your salmon eggs. When are you leaving? Chester, oh, about four tomorrow morning. Where's my bait? Marion, in the car with two other bags of groceries. Interior, Hargis Kitchen, day, medium shot. Marion starts stacking frozen food items on the counter and removing canned goods from the bags as Chester enters with the two bags and sets them down. He starts rummaging through the bags for his salmon eggs. Chester, did you happen to get beer? Marion, turning in surprise. There were nearly two six-packs in the refrigerator. What happened to them? Close up, Chester. He glances into one of the bags and starts looking for the salmon eggs. Chester, shrugging. I give up. Bring the eggs in when you find them. Walking into den. Oh, I called Lisa and she'll be over to get the coat. Close up, refrigerator. As Marion opens the freezer door to put away the frozen food items, camera zooms in on the compartment. A cylinder can sits there, bearing the legend, Keep Frozen. Marion tries to set the many frozen TV dinners and other food items in the freezer. There isn't room. She turns and puts the frozen food on the counter and calls over her shoulder. What's in that canister in the freezer? No, I don't want to know. This is our house, not the lab. What we eat goes in the freezer. During this speech, Chester enters the kitchen. Chester, well, there you go, getting all upset. For all you know, I've been doing you a big favor. Marion, the biggest favor you can do is stay home for a while. You're gone three months in Alaska, laying that oil pipeline that nobody wants, and the first thing you do when you get home is you go fishing with your buddies. Chester, putting his arms around her. Honey, you know that's not the first thing I did when I got home. Marion, oh, Chester, it's good to have you home. She backs up against the cold container she set down. Marion continuing, ooh, that thing's freezing. What's in it, anyhow? Chester, oh, it's a mineral sample one of the bulldozer men turned up in the permafrost. I want to keep it frozen till I can get it to the lab. Marion, well, I don't want it in my freezer. Chester, Okay, honey, I'll drop it off at the lab on my way to the lake. Chester turns and exits towards the den. Interior, kitchen. Close up, Marion. She starts putting the frozen food items, which consist mostly of TV dinners, into the freezer. Chester is crossing from the desk to the TV set with a light fishing rod in his hand. He turns the set on, dials it around to a channel, and turns around, testing the whip of the fishing rod. He gives it a cast and hooks a lamp. He spins around, catching the lamp by the shade, and sets it back up. Interior, Hargis Kitchen. Marion is putting away the last of the frozen food items. There obviously isn't enough room in the freezer now to put that canister back. We hear the off-screen TV as the start of the Lakers game comes on. Marion goes to the drain board and takes the three empty grocery sacks and begins to fold them up and put them away. Close-up, drain board and canister. With a pop, the canister's top pops off, revealing the grayish blob, brittle and still apparently mostly frozen. The sunlight through the window is halfway across the portion of the blob that is exposed. We hear over this sudden meow from a cat. Samuel enters. He is parading across the windowsill on the outside of the screen, demanding dinner. Marion, she reacts. Oh, there you are, you vagrant. She gets the dish from under the sink and puts it on the floor. Medium shot, window, and cat. The cat jumps down from the window, still outside. Marion, continuing. Come on, Samuel, get in here. Marion gets the box of cat food to fix the cat's dinner. Full shot, screen door. Samuel enters through this entrance flap and crosses over to the dish. Camera pans with him. Over this, Marion, off screen, continuing. Where have you been all day, you bad cat? 
The cat yells at her once. Marion. She finishes opening the cat food and bends down to the dish. Marion, continuing. Well, I'm glad to hear you're hungry. Does that mean you've been leaving the birds alone? Extreme close-up. The blob. The side of which the sunlight has fallen has rounded somewhat and turned reddish. A fly lands on this area and is immediately engulfed by the reddish part of the blob. Over this, the sounds of filling the cat's dish, the cat yowling, and Marion doing ad-libs to Samuel. Marion leaned on the floor. She finishes scooping food into the cat's dish and throws the can into the trash, placing the spoon on the drain board. Interior, kitchen, extreme close-up, the blob. The spoon pushes the cold part of the blob, moving it totally into the sunlight. Marion, stuff yourself, you little pig. She exits. Interior, Hargis Den, Chester. Marion enters, holding up a jacket. Marion, did you see the jacket I made Jeff? Chester, oh, that's beautiful. Do you mind wrapping it in the kitchen? I've got all my fishing gear and samples here. Marion, sorry, dear. Hargis Kitchen, extreme close-up, the blob. The blob is entirely red now and at the edge of the drain board, beginning to work its way up over the side. Marion re-enters with the jacket over her arm and a cardboard box. She begins folding the jacket and putting it in the box. Close-up, the blob. It moves off the edge of the drain board and drops to the floor. Floor, angle towards Samuel the cat. He jumps, startled, and looks at the blob lying there. Full shot, Marion. Marion is putting the lid on the box. Marion. Lisa and I have talked about going into business together making these. Chester is looking through some lures at the desk and doesn't look up. Chester, voiceover, matter of factly. Oh, that's a good idea. If you split the profits, you might make as much as 37 cents an hour. She makes a face at him and crosses to the den. Marion, on her way in. I have to go over to Sally's for a few minutes. If Lisa comes, give me a holler. The coat's in the box. Chester, absently. All right, dear. Chester continues working with his tackle. Hargis Kitchen, floor angle, Samuel and the blob. Samuel has poked an inquisitive paw at the blob, and to find gravity, it swarms up at him. He lets out a yowl and heads through the door. The blob gloms onto his tail. Full shot, Marion and Samuel. The cat is going through the door as Marion enters the kitchen. Marion calling. Chester, something's wrong with Samuel. Hargis Den. Chester. Chester has his fantastic tackle box open and is putting the salmon eggs in besides the cold beer. The TV set is blaring and he hasn't heard her. Exterior, Hargis backyard, full shot, Marion. There are rose bushes and many plants. Marion looks right and left as she stands on the back doorstop. Marion. Samuel, where are you? She moves down the brick path towards the corner of the house. She comes to a stop by the corner of the house. Marion, continuing. Here, kitty, 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 kitty. Samuel, are you all right? Beside her is a rack on the corner of the house containing garden tools and a broom. She takes the broom from the rack, using the handle to lift the bushes up. She bends down to look into the bushes. Marion, continuing. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. Come on, Samuel. Camera tilts down to her legs, placed not too far apart. Behind her legs, the blob, now cat size, is sliding out from under a bush. Marion, continuing. Come out, darling. Where are you? Samuel? The blob gets to her legs and wraps itself around both ankles. Camera tilts up to her face as she looks down in horror. Medium shot, Marion. She manages to swing the broom down, frantically scraping at the blob with the broom bristles. It has no effect. She whimpers in fright and turns to try and run into the house. The blob on her legs impedes her movements and she pitches forwards, striking her head on the brick path. Interior, Lisa's studio, day. Extreme close-up, sparking acetylene torch. We hear the loud hissing of the acetylene torch as we pull back to see Lisa. She looks great. Camera pans with her as she walks past her painting, working on a wire sculpture. Back to us using the acetylene torch is Leslie. We cannot see that she is a girl because of her welder's mask. Lisa yelling, I'm going now! Les continues welding, unheeding. Lisa continuing yelling, Hey, Les! 
Les continues brazing and Lisa walks over and taps her on the shoulder. Les straightens, turns off the torch with a pop and turns to Lisa. Tight two shot, Les and Lisa. Les lifts the mask, stands up, and we see she is a girl. Les. What's up? Lisa. I'm going to get Jeff's present now at Marion's. Do we need anything else for tonight? Les, as they walk towards the door. Just Jeff. Lisa, going through the door. Oh, come on. You don't really believe that I can't get him here. Exterior, Lisa's studio. Medium shot. Lisa and Les through the door. Ellen, off screen. Hi, everybody. Stanley and Ellen walk into frame. They are 18 years old hippie types. Stanley, obviously stoned, smiles and raises his right hand in a flat-palmed Indian salutation. Medium shot, Les and Lisa. Ellen enters the shot. Stanley, in the background, is looking at Les's sculpture, touches it and rapidly withdraws his hand, having burned his fingers on the hot metal. Ellen, what's left to do? The shopping is done and the brownies are made... Ellen opens the box and pops a brownie in her mouth. Stanley takes two. Lisa. I'm going to get Jeff's present at Chester's and Marion's. Ellen with a full mouth. Oh, I forgot to get anything for Jeff. Lisa tasting a brownie. <laughs> now I know why. Less to Lisa. Listen, are you sure you can get Jeff over here? I mean, it's not going to be a surprise party if he doesn't show. Lisa interrupting with laughter. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I'll get him here. Ellen. When he's writing music, dynamite couldn't move him. Stanley. Hey, that's a great idea. We'll get about four sticks of dynamite. He pauses to think, then he shakes his head. Uh, too obvious. We hire a band of Armenian midgets who... He breaks up his own incoherence. Uh, play silver ukuleles. During Lisa's next speech, she is painting an Indian mandala on Stanley's forehead. Lisa, calmly, he'll be here tonight, right here in this place, guaranteed. Just see if you can get some of the grime off yourself before everyone gets here. Ellen, try to beat the horn or something so we'll know you're here. Lisa, whispering, just be very quiet. Don't play any music and listen for the car. Ellen, well, if everything's done, we'll see you later tonight. Stanley, smiling, yeah. Ellen and Stanley walk towards the door. Lisa and Les. Les, where are you going? Everybody will be here in a few minutes. Ellen and Stanley stop and turn. Stanley, uh, we're going to discover acoustics. We'll be right back. Les, you're sure you can handle it? Stanley, we'll be right back. Ellen and Stanley leave. Les, with a good luck reaction to Stanley to Lisa. Don't worry, if Jeff doesn't make the party, we'll still have a good time. Lisa. I'm not sure what I'll have to do, but I'll get Jeff here tonight. I may have to really lay it on thick, so tell everyone to play along with me when we come. She turns to go. I gotta run. See you later. Interior. Hargis Den. Day. Medium shot. Chester. Chester is sitting in the easy chair in front of the TV, working on the reel and lure, drinking a beer, while the game is blaring on the tube. Camera pans across the room and zooms to a point of view through the screen door of the back porch. Oozing through the screen is the blob. Chester picks up his beer can to take a drink, finds it empty. He sets down the lure he has been working on and gets up to go into the kitchen. Exterior, car, day, traveling shot, side angle close-up of Lisa. She is driving. Camera pulls back to show the car as a whole. Interior, Hargis Den, medium shot, Chester. Chester enters the frame with a new beer and a tray of pretzels, walks past the blob, still not seeing it. Camera dollies with him into the den. The game on the TV is over. He sets down the pretzels on the table near his swivel chair. He walks to the set and starts going around the channels. We stay medium close on Chester as he does this. Taking a drink from his beer, he examines the channels as he goes around. He backs up to his chair and is about to sit changes his mind, goes to the set again, and plays with the dial. The blob starts over the back of his chair. Chester stands up, takes a swig, backs up to his chair, and just as he sits, we... Cut to. Exterior roadside, late afternoon, full shot, Boy Scout troop. Scoutmaster Potts is leading his troop on a hike and field trip. He's pointing out some wild mustard which is growing in the vicinity of the Hargis house. 
Pots, monologue. Men, mustard is a family or plant of the genus Brassica of the mustard cabbage and cress family. Mustard is a sturdy and crafty plant which can survive under a multiplicity of conditions, used as a spice and oil and even as a base for a weapon of war. Another angle. Lisa pulls into the frame and we see the scouts are in immediate vicinity of the Hargis house. Lisa. Hi, Mr. Potts. Are you boys exploring the wild fauna again? Potts. Oh, yes, Miss Clark. We, we best be going, boys. During this, one of the scouts has picked a mustard flower and hands it to Lisa. The scout troops off as we cut to exterior, Hargis driveway and street. Late afternoon, high wide angle shot featuring Lisa's car. She approaches the driveway, pulls in and parks behind Marion's car. The house is in an isolated area. We see the boy scouts in the background marching in order behind Mr. Potts. Lisa smiles as she looks at their trek. Exterior back of Hargis house. We can hear the off-screen TV faintly. Lisa comes to the screen door and knocks. There is no answer. Lisa. Marion! Chester! She opens the screen door and goes in. Interior Hargis kitchen late afternoon. Lisa enters and pauses. We can hear the off-screen TV a little louder here. Marion! Anybody home? She sees the pack in, package and picks it up, takes a step or two, and looks around. Her point of view shows the neat kitchen. Medium shot, Lisa. She turns to go into the other part of the house. She takes a timid step and calls. Lisa. Hello, Chester. Chester, tell Marion I picked up the coat. No answer. She goes into the den. Lisa, continuing. Hey, Chester. She turns the chair around. Extreme close-up, Chester. His face showing through the translucent red goo of the blob, contorted into a silent scream. Close up, Lisa. She screams. Her stricken gaze follows Chester as the chair spins around and around. She gasps, clutches at her throat, staring at what is happening before her eyes, which we cannot see. She screams again, turns and runs out of the kitchen into the backyard, still clutching the box. Exterior, back of Hargis house. Lisa runs from the back of the house and jumps into her car. Camera zooms into her and she tries frantically to start the engine. She fumbles doing so. She casts apprehensive glances at the door to the house. Finally, the car starts, and she guns it backwards down the narrow driveway at maximum speed. She peels out into the street and drives off. Exterior, suburban intersection, late afternoon. There are boulevard stops at one side of the intersection. A station wagon on the boulevard, a top side, approaches the intersection and makes a stop. She is zipping down the highway. Ahead of her is a slow-moving van. Side angle. Fazio's car. His right turn signal is on. Approaching him on the left is the same van, its left turn signal on. Point of view shot through windshield Lisa's car. She is closing fast on the van ahead. We can see the rear left turn signal going. She swings out to pass on the right and steps on the gas. Ahead on the right is Mr. Fazio's car. He starts to pull out making his right turn as Lisa bears down on him. She hits the horn and swings left. Side angle, Lisa's car. It swings around Fazio, horn blaring. Fazio's car. Mr. Fazio reacts violently to the horn honk and yanks the wheel to the right. Mr. Fazio's station wagon jumps the curb and bangs into a tree as Lisa roars by, still leaning on her horn. Mr. Fazio leaps out of his station wagon and runs to the curb to get a better look at Lisa's departing car. Medium close shot, Mr. Fazio. He is beside himself. Fazio. Those lousy kids, I break my neck to be understanding, and what do I get? Jeff's cabin, interior, evening. We see Jeff at his camera equipment with great concentration as the camera moves in on him. Exterior, stable area, evening, side angle, full shot, Lisa. She drives up, exits the car, and runs to the door in great agitation. Over her shoulder, we see Wesley and James, who holds a chicken, the two stable hands, leading horses into the stable. They ad-lib concern, and they tease Lisa. Wesley. Hey, Lisa, what's the matter, honey? What's the matter? Lisa runs into the door. Exterior door, evening, point of view shot over Lisa's shoulder. Reverse angle close-up to Jeff. Jeff crumples as his negatives are destroyed by the light flooding the room. Lisa darts in and throws herself at Jeff, clinging to him. Lisa. Oh, Jeff, it was terrible, terrible. It, it, it killed him. He's, he's dead. He's dead. Jeff overlapping. 
What's, what's the matter? What is it? Lisa releases Jeff as he pushes the door closed. Lisa. It killed him and came at me. Jeff takes her shoulders, pushing her back to look at her. Jeff. Lisa, what is it? What's the matter? He makes a move to lead her into the apartment. She stops him. Lisa. No, no, we have to go now. Hurry. She yanks the door open and grabs Jeff's wrist, almost jerking him off his feet as she pulls him out the door. Exterior, stable area. Jeff's cabin door. Jeff and Lisa emerge from the cabin as Wesley and James walk over to meet them at Lisa's car, ad-libbing. Jeff and Lisa jump in the car. Donkeys are blocking egress. Jeff gets out and goads them to move. Lisa is upset. Exterior, accident site, dusk. A sheriff's car has pulled up behind Mr. Fazio's station wagon, and Sheriff Jones is standing beside Mr. Fazio. He has a notebook in his hand. Sheriff Jones. And you didn't get the license number. Mr. Fazio. No, but... Sheriff Jones closes his notebook. Noticing this, Fazio continues. Fazio. Uh, she was a brunette, and the car uh, it could be traced, couldn't it? Well, will anything be done about this? He waves his arm at his damaged car. The sheriff is turning to go back to his car, putting his black book away as the camera pans with him. He looks back over his shoulder. Sheriff, leaving the scene of an accident is a crime, Mr. Fazio, if you can prove it. Fazio runs after him, ticking items off on his fingers. Fazio, brunette, safari-type car. The sheriff opens his door, nodding. Sheriff, yes, yes, Mr. Fazio, but at this point it's your word against hers. Fazio. Sheriff, I happen to be a very important man in this town. Fazio looks up and his eyes grow wide. Fazio, continuing. Sheriff, Sheriff, look there! Look, look, look there! Fazio's point of view, Lisa's car, driven by Jeff, goes zipping past the scene. The sheriff's and Fazio's head turn as the car goes speeding by. Fazio, continuing. That's it! That's her! She's the one! Hurry, Sheriff! Catch her! Fazio is half pushing the sheriff into the car. His hat is being pushed over his eyes. The sheriff plunks down into the seat, stiff arms, the door that Fazio is trying to close on his leg, and pushes his hat back up. He shouts at Fazio angrily. Sheriff, hold it, hold it! Fazio jumps back a little startled. He looks up in the direction Lisa's car has gone as the sheriff closes the door. Fazio, oh, sheriff, they just turned, they just turned left up there. Medium close, sheriff. Sheriff, exasperated. All right. All right, Mr. Fazio, I'll see if I can find them. He reaches for the ignition and starts his car with slow dignity. He puts it in reverse and backs up, leaving Fazio standing there. Exterior, Hargis House, dusk. As Jeff and Lisa pull up, they go into the driveway and pull up behind Marion's car. It is late enough for headlights, but Jeff has not put them on yet. They get out of the car. Lisa takes Jeff's hands and leads him to the back of the Hargis House. Exterior, rear of the Hargis House. They come to the screen door and stop. Lisa stands there, staring at the door. Jeff looks at her, steps up to the door and knocks. There is no answer. He calls. Jeff. Jester? He looks at Lisa. She shudders. He opens the screen door and starts in as Lisa grabs his arm. Lisa. No, no, don't, don't go in there. Jeff. Don't go in there. Then what would you bring me here for? Lisa. I I'm afraid. Jeff. Okay, you wait here. He turns and goes into the house. Jeff enters the dark kitchen. We can hear the TV off-screen in the darkness. Jeff takes a step or two forward and kicks a metal trash can receptacle, which falls with a louder clatter. Lisa reacts to the noise. Lisa. Jeff! Suddenly light streams through the door and windows. Jeff has found a switch. Jeff, off-screen. It's all right, come on. Hargis Kitchen, night. Lisa enters looking a little wild-eyed. She steps around to spill trash and beer cans. The kitchen is as we saw it last, neat with the cat's dish on the floor. Jeff turns toward the sound of the TV and they move cautiously into the hall. They come into the den. It is lighted only by the TV set. Jeff goes to the dark lamp and turns it on. He looks around. There is a nearly full can of beer on the TV. Jeff picks it up and shakes it. He sets it down and pushes the off button on the TV. Lisa looks around the room. We can hear a tapping sound in the house. Jeff starts up the hall. Lisa, don't leave me here. Jeff, come on, I'm going to look around for Chester. Lisa, I I'm afraid. I I'm staying here. Jeff smiles and searches for the tapping. Various angles. 
we see Jeff walk up the hall, peering into the bathroom, peering into the bedroom. In the bedroom, the tapping gets louder. Jeff slowly goes to investigate. The window shutters are tapping against the pane. Jeff closes the window, and the shade flies off and spins around, causing a racket. Interspersed with above reaction shots of Lisa, an ad-libbed abomination to Jeff to be careful. Jeff re-enters the den uncomfortably. Jeff. Oh, come on, honey, this is ridiculous. Close up, Lisa. Lisa. He, he looked like he was trying to scream through it. Then, then, he, then he fell and he just dissolved right there. She shudders. Jeff takes her arm and they start to exit. Jeff, frowning. I don't know what to tell you. Let's get out of here. Exterior, back of Hargis house, night. The light shines through the kitchen windows. They suddenly go out. Shortly after, the screen door opens and Jeff and Lisa come out. A spotlight hits them and they shield their eyes. Sheriff, off screen. All right, stand still. This is the sheriff. Lisa. Please, something terrible has happened. Chester Hargis, he's been killed. Sheriff. Now hold it now. Who are you? Lisa. L Lisa Clark. He, he was... Sheriff. Hold it right there. To Jeff. And you? Jeff. Jeff Hartford? Sheriff Jones takes the spotlight off them and points it at Lisa's car. Sheriff. Is this your car? Lisa. Yes, it's my car. Sheriff. All right, now who was killed? Lisa, indicating the house. Chester Hargis, he lives there. Sheriff. Where's the body? Lisa. It's gone. Sheriff. Did you move it? Lisa. No, 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 you don't understand. It, it was... He... Sheriff. Okay, come over to my car. Camera pushes into the light. Sheriff, voiceover. Control, this is a code 7. Get a couple of men over to Hastings Street. Exterior, drain pipe, night. As we push into the light, we hear weird sounds. Hooting, hollering, gagging, sobbing, etc. from within the pipe. Camera dollies to be in line with the drain pipe, and we see a flickering light some distance back in the pipe. A candle is burning, illuminating the faces of Stanley and Ellen, who appear to be kissing. Ellen is actually giving Stanley a supercharged hit with a marijuana cigarette. He pulls back. He talks with the strained voice of someone who's holding in a hit. Stanley. Mmm, this is a far out idea. Ellen. Isn't this great? I dig how my voice sounds in here. Whoo! Stanley. Jeff ought to tape this. It, it sounds like reverb, reverb, reverb. He imitates the sound of an electric guitar. Dow, dow, da, 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 ding, ding. Ellen, that's really weird. Stanley, weird, 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 weird. He sounds grotesque as he mimics her. They both laugh. She takes a hit off the joint. Stanley leans back against his side of the drain, hands behind his head. Ellen in a strained voice. So, go on, tell me your idea for the party. Stanley hits his fist on his legs and bangs his heels up and down in glee. Stanley. Oh yeah, man, we get this Tasmanian gondolier to dress up in a chartreuse Zambezi uniform and then flash! He says flash in an exaggerated way. Suddenly, a bright light strikes them in the face and they jump. A man's voice echoes down the drain pipe. Deputy Sims, off screen. Freeze! Hold it right there! Stanley digs frantically in his pocket, pulling out a baggie, flinging it up the drain pipe. Ellen is standing now, bent over in the pipe. Ellen. Hey, what's the matter? We didn't do anything. We are on our way to my sister's house. The voice echoes up the pipe again. Deputy Sims, off screen. You back there! Get around where I can see you! Stanley moves up beside Ellen. Stanley. What's the idea? Deputy Sims off screen. Get your hands up where I can see them. Stanley and Ellen put their hands in front of them. Over shoulder shot looking toward end of pipe. As Deputy Sims walks into the pipe a few steps with his light and his drawn gun, another officer, Deputy Kelly, steps into the pipe opening behind Deputy Sims. He too has his gun drawn and holds a flashlight. Deputy Kelly. Hey Sims, there's a code 7 on the radio. He holsters his gun as he speaks. We better drop this. Deputy Sims, drop this? I'm not dropping anything. Deputy Kelly, they're just kids. Deputy Sims sniffs the air. Kids, huh? 
Deputy Kelly. When an officer asks for assistance, that's more important. Let's go. Stanley. Can we go? We'll go right home. The deputies overlap each other. Yes, no. Deputy Sims, still holding his gun, turns his head to look at Deputy Kelly. Kelly stares at him for a beat. Deputy Kelly. Okay, Ted, you do what you want. I'm going on that code seven. Exterior, drain pipe, at night. Deputy Kelly walks up an embankment to the two parked squad cars. He gets in the first one, starts it, peels out with siren and red light blaring. The camera is in line with the drain pipe. Deputy Sims stands a few feet inside the drain pipe, his back to us, as Stanley and Ellen walk toward him, bent over in the pipe. At the top of the drain pipe, we see the blob descending behind Deputy Sims' head. Deputy Sims, now start coming out nice and slow. Stanley, what's that behind you? Deputy Sims, now let's not get cute, just come out of there. Stanley and Ellen stop a few feet in front of Sims. Ellen, but there's something coming up behind you. Deputy Sims, are you coming out of there or do I have to come in and get you? He then cocks his revolver. Ellen, shouting, look out! Deputy Sims backs up and his head strikes the blob, buckling him at the knees. His gun fires, the bullet ricocheting wildly up the drain pipe, as Stanley and Ellen hit the deck with their hands over their heads. We hear voiceover sound as an opening, howls, screams, gagging, and sobbing. Exterior, street in front of Hargis House, night. The sheriff crosses to the front of the house, motioning to the first deputy, who is out of his car, to follow. A motorcycle deputy pulls up and dismounts, as Deputy Kelly in another car pulls up simultaneously with the motorcycle deputy. He exits his vehicle and joins the other two deputies and the sheriff. Sheriff Jones looks at the deputies and points to the Hargis House. Sheriff. I need someone to go in the house with me and somebody to watch the two in the car. Deputy Kelly. Uh, I left Sims on an arrest. If you can get by without me, I'd like to go back. Sheriff. Yeah, okay. Jim, cover the back door. Exterior, front of Hargis house. Long shot. The deputies disperse while the sheriff heads for the front of the house. Interior, barber shop. Night. Barber and customer. Camera pans with them as the barber leads the customer to the sink. Tight medium shot. The barber thrusts the customer's head down into the sink. With a hold on the customer's neck, the barber reaches for the shampoo bottle. After placing the bottle nearby, the barber reaches for the sink faucet. Barber. Head down, that's good. I'll fix you up good. The barber turns on the water, which cascades upon the customer's head. The customer is squinting and spluttering as the water runs onto his face. Barber, continuing. It's hot, but good, eh? I'll fix you up. The barber turns off the water and picks up the shampoo bottle. He shakes the liquid on the customer's head and begins to rub his head. Sink drain, over customer's shoulder. The sink has a large drain. There is a gooey mess slowly rising to the top. Close up, barber and customer. Barber, continuing. Feels good on the head, eh? Now the cold rinse. Customer, mmph. Barber, okay, now get ready for a shock. The barber shoves the man's head further into the sink to get his head under the tap. The barber reaches for the tap to turn the water on again. The blob gushes up out of the sink. The barber screams as his hands, which are holding the customer's head, are enveloped by it. Exterior street, night, Fazio in car, traveling. He is peering around, looking for the sheriff and Jeff and Lisa. Fazio's point of view. We see Jeff and Lisa in the back of the sheriff's car and several squad cars with their lights on. Close up, Fazio, traveling. He starts singing and giggling with glee. Fazio, they got him, they got him! Side angle, Hargis house. Fazio jumps out of his car and runs to the first available cop, the one watching Jeff and Lisa, shaking his head vigorously and spouting off about the virtues of law enforcement. Close up, Jeff and Lisa. They react to Fazio. Hargis house. From the driveway, looking towards the house, we see the sheriff come around the corner with his flashlight in his hand, sending the beam around the area. He flicks off the light and gestures to the other deputies as they converge to the Hargis lawn. Medium shot, sheriff and the two deputies. Sheriff. Nothing going on here. You boys go back and take care of your normal duties. The deputies disperse as the sheriff walks up to Jeff and Lisa, 
Over this, we hear the squad car and the motorcycle start up and leave. Medium shot. Jeff, Lisa, Sheriff, and Fazio. The Sheriff opens the car door. Sheriff. Okay, you can go home. Jeff and Lisa get out. Another angle. Fazio. Sheriff, what's going on? I, I demand that you arrest these two. The Sheriff turns to Fazio and glares, as if to say, Turn, Blue. Full shot. Sheriff, to Lisa and Jeff. There's nobody here now. If they don't turn up by morning, come by the station and make a report. Lisa. Oh, Chester's dead. I don't know what happened to Marion. There's something loose that kills people and you want us to come in tomorrow? Sheriff. Maybe you kids are on a trip or something. I don't know and I don't care. My deputies and I have done a thorough search. There's nothing in there, so let's clear out. Lisa. Upset. I'm not on a trip. I know what I saw. Fazio. All right, miss, you've caused enough trouble for one night. I filed a complaint about your driving. Maybe you'd like to go to the station right now. Lisa turns and clings to Jeff, her head on his chest. Lisa, he's dead. He's dead. I saw it. Jeff, please, Sheriff. The Sheriff looks back and forth at both of them and Fazio. Sheriff, if they don't turn up, come by tomorrow. Jeff, yes, sir. The Sheriff gets into his car to exit. He starts to pull away. Fazio trots alongside. Fazio. Sheriff, I wish to make a citizen's arrest. Stop. Sheriff. He stops running as the sheriff has pulled out of range. He turns to Jeff and Lisa. Fazio, continuing. I'll get you for this. Jeff heaves a sigh. Lisa. Do you believe me? Jeff, patiently. Come on, get in the car. We'll go to your place and have a Coke and a sandwich. Lisa, stiffening. Jeff, do you believe me? Jeff looks at her for a beat. Well, I find it hard to believe that Chester would leave a full can of beer for anything. He pushes her into the car and closes the door. Interior, bathroom, night, tub man. The bathtub is filled with bubbles. The man is in the tub, talking on the telephone. As he talks, the camera pans down to the floor, showing a pair of slippers. The camera pans away from him toward the door. We see a small poodle sleeping on the mat, and at the door appears we can see the blob oozing underneath it. Over this, the tub man talks. That's all right. I don't care. When I arrive at the restaurant tonight, I want all the busboys and waiters lined up. And listen, I don't want to see one button unpolished. I don't want to see one epaulet crooked. I don't want to see one speck of lint on the coattail. Understand? I am not shouting, all right? He reaches over the side of the tub and hangs up the telephone. He settles back and then snaps his head around again on a double take. Point of view shot, the blob. It is oozing into the bathroom under the door. He spins around onto his knees. The dog is awake now and we hear it yapping. Tubman continuing. What the devil? Chloe, stay away from that. He reaches down, picks up one of his slippers. Tubman continuing. Chloe, get away from there. He swings the slipper at her, letting go of it. Slipper lands partly in the blob. The dog enters the scene and grabs at the slipper. Close up, tub man. He is staring at the blob and the dog. The dog starts to yip in pain and then stops in mid-yip. The tub man reacts in horror and jumps up out of the frame and exits. Medium shot, window. The tub man dashes out the open bathroom window. Exterior, street, night, sheriff's squad car. Deputy Kelly sits in his squad car, slowly driving back to meet Sims. He hears a scream off screen, getting louder and coming his way. Through windshield. A sudsy figure approaches the car, hollering his head off. Astonished, Deputy Kelly stops his car, turns on the flashlight lights, gets out and runs around the car to apprehend the new Tubman. Tubman runs up and grabs him by the shoulders. Tubman, you're just the man I want to see. Deputy Kelly, and you're just the man I want to see. Get in the car, nature boy. Kelly leads the tub man to the squad car and opens the door for him. The tub man is talking excitedly as he gets in. Tub man, you'll never believe what I've seen. Deputy Kelly, I don't believe what I've seen. He looks through the window at the man. I don't suppose you have any identification. Exterior, stable, night. Wesley and James meet the Boy Scouts. Wesley, to Scouts, watch out for the Wolverines, boys. As long as you don't look at them, it's okay. 
But as soon as you do, well, Potts, we're going to camp on the ridge. James, careful of the coyotes. They're awful hungry this time of year. Interspersed with above reaction shots, the awed Boy Scouts. Interior, a diner, night. Bob, a truck driver, enters. Bob, here I am, Mr. Wonderful. He is stunned by the silence. The diner is deserted. He sits at the counter, which has several meals placed on it, but no patrons. Bob, continuing. Hey, a little service. On the grill are several hamburgers burning up to a crisp. Bob turns off the grill. Camera pans with him as he picks up a club sandwich off the countertop and takes a bite, then turns to exit. Exterior, diner. The blob is climbing up the passenger side of Blob's Avis van. Camera pans to diner's front door. Bob, finishing the sandwich, shrugs and enters his van. High long shot on the road. The Avis van is approaching a woman who is standing in the roadway. Medium shot, woman, Bob and van with Blob on roof. Bob has stopped the van. Bob, what's the trouble, sweetheart? Close up. The woman pulls off her bonnet, revealing George, a mustachioed villain who pulls a gun. George, out of the truck, lover. High long shot. Bob gets out of the truck. George gets into it. We see the blob pulsating on the roof of the van. Bob yells to George as the van pulls away. Bob, make sure to return it before Tuesday. I'll have to pay overtime. Side angle, roadway. We see the van pass us, going slowly. Off screen, screams. We follow the van as it comes to a stop. Jeff and Lisa's car passes by and disappears out of frame. Scene at 92 through 109, omitted. Scene 110, exterior, Lisa's studio, night. The car drives up and Jeff and Lisa get out. Jeff, Lisa, you gotta get some rest. Take it easy. Tomorrow morning we'll talk about it. Lisa, tomorrow morning will be too late. Jeff, look, honey, just, just take it easy. They are now up to the door. The door flies open. A bright light goes on from an 8mm camera light bar. A huge batch of gunpowder and simultaneously ignited. A boy, Joe, is in the center of this in a gorilla suit, pounding his chest while a chorus of voices yell, Surprise! Point of view from the 8mm camera. Bob, with his 8mm camera and light bar, is filming this for posterity. A shrunken image on the screen, obvious handheld amateur 8mm style. Jeff and Lisa stand in the doorway looking surprised. Jeff puts his hands up to the glare of the light and music begins in the room. Interior, Lisa's studio, night, full shot, 8mm point of view. Lisa and Jeff enter as hands reach, pulling them in. Jeff, still guarding his eyes from the light, is really gassed. He grabs Lisa's arm. Jeff, boy, you are something else. Jeff is guided towards a chair. Lisa smiles sickly in the bright glare. The 8mm image zooms in to Jeff as he turns his head towards Lisa. Jeff, continuing. Were Chester and Marion in on this? Buck and Benny are shoving Jeff along, mugging at the camera. Over this, we hear Lisa. No, no, Jeff, listen, you, you've got to believe me. I didn't make that up. It was real. Jeff is hustled toward a high back chair as the 8mm image follows him. He is plunked down in the chair and two of the girls, Rose and Annie, approach the chair from the rear, one on each side. Rose has a huge champagne glass with a foot-long hollow stem which she places in Jeff's hand. Annie carries a gallon bottle of Red Mountain wine. She curtsies for the camera and begins to fill Jeff's glass. Adrienne has stepped in from the other side with a foot-long cigar which she sticks in Jeff's mouth. She steps back and Les steps in with a lighted blowtorch to light the cigar. Jeff puffs it to life and Les steps out with the torch. Jeff is really having a ball. He raises his glass in a salute and takes a drink. The noise level is high through all this and we have caught a couple of glimpses of Lisa. Camera pans the room and we see obvious mugging for the camera. The gorilla is running everywhere. Joe in the gorilla suit runs up to Lisa. Lisa. Listen, everybody, I have to tell you something. Full shot. Facing Lisa. Bob stops the camera and turns the light bar off. Lisa stands and looks around the room. Lisa continuing. L listen, everybody, something something terrible happened tonight. Buck, drawling. Well, Lisa, I warned you about Jeff. This draws a few chuckles, and Lisa throws a hard look at Buck. Lisa, 
Oh, Buck, I'm serious. We're all in danger. Everybody in this town, there's a monstrous thing loose. Joe, taking off his gorilla head. Say, that's funny, holds up his watch. I noticed my watch is magnetized, and the moon, it's full tonight, and when I saw it, I suddenly felt weird all over. He starts imitating a werewolf. Close up on Jeff, he and everyone else are having a laugh. Lisa shouting, will you stop it? No one is paying any attention to her. She runs out, trying to be alone. Camera follows her through a room full of people, then she huddles in a corner miserably. Les comes into the frame, carrying a birthday cake with many candles on it. Close-up of Les and the cake. Camera follows Les as she walks over to put down the cake. Les to Jeff. We didn't know what she'd do to get you here, but you're here now. Happy birthday. Jeff. How many candles is that? Buck. You gotta make a wish. Jeff and group. Jeff. Quietly. I've got everything I want. Hey, where's Lisa? Joe. Come on, blow them out. Jeff. Come on, you guys. I can't blow all those out. Les. We'll help. Okay, everybody, big breath. Everyone takes a big breath. Girls pull their hair back to avoid the flames, and they all lean in and blow. Various handheld shots. People blowing, candles going out, people leaning over to reach stubborn ones, bumping heads, almost falling on the cake, etc. Full shot, across table to principals. As the last candle is blown out, some people are gasping and waving at the pall of smoke. Some applaud. Les cuts the cake, candles and all. Camera follows Jeff as he gets up to look for Lisa through the room. He finally finds her in a corner with her head in her hands. Jeff, Lisa, what's the matter? Lisa, I can't take any more of this. Can we get out of here? I, I, can we go to your place? Jeff, sure, honey, come on. They weave their way out of the party. Joe, man, where are you going? Jeff, we just want to be alone for a while. Maybe I'll come back later. Exterior, art center, night, full shot. Jeff and Lisa run out, Jeff in the lead. They run to Lisa's car, and Jeff runs around to the driver's side. Lisa gets in, Jeff starts up and backs out. Scene 121, omitted. Interior, sheriff station, night, medium close-up, tub man. He is on the phone, nude from the waist up, looking very much like the first time we saw him. As he speaks, sounding very much like the first time we heard him, the camera pulls back to reveal the station. There are a half dozen desks, a switchboard, and a radio desk. A public entrance area is separated from this by a railing and reception desk. Deputy Kelly is at the reception desk in the foreground, and Deputy Williams is at the switchboard. As the shot widens, we see that the tub man has a towel wrapped around his waist. Tub man. No, he cannot call me back. I told you this is an emergency. You just find him and put him through to me. I don't care. Of course I'll wait. What do you think? When the shot has reached its widest point, Sheriff Jones enters from the public entrance and goes to the reception area. He and Deputy Kelly are in the foreground, the tub man in the background, and Deputy Williams to one side. Sheriff, indicating tub man. What have you got there? Deputy Kelly. Indecent exposure. Trotting down the street in his birthday suit. Say, I didn't have a chance to get back to Sims, and he hasn't turned up yet. Sheriff. What was it? Deputy Kelly. Just a couple of kids in a drain pipe. Deputy Williams walks up to the reception desk with a piece of paper. Deputy Williams. We sent Eddie over to check it out. Sheriff Jones. Anything else? Deputy Williams looking at paper. We're having a weird night here. Nobody is where they're supposed to be. A Mrs. Carmel just called. Her husband's a barber. Very steady type. Always comes home, only he didn't. And he is not in his shop. Her oldest son went to look for him and the shop was wide open with nobody there. And Mrs. Barker, who is always home, isn't. Mr. Ziegler, who had a very important meeting, didn't make it there or any place else. No way to check that out yet. And I got a half dozen more missing person calls. During all this dialogue, another deputy is trying to fit the tub man into some clothes they have there. Deputy. Here, give him my jacket for the time being. Somewhere during the dialogue, the tub man splits the jacket up the back. Deputy Kelly. What's going on? Sheriff. What about the big annual tournament at the bowling alley? Deputy Kelly. Oh yeah, I didn't think about that. Sheriff. That's why I'm the sheriff and you're the deputies. Camera changes focus to the tub man in the background. He puts his hand on the mouthpiece and calls to the sheriff and deputies. Tub man. Listen, sheriff, you got some great help around here. 
I've been trying to tell these jerks for an hour that there's a... He is interrupted by the phone. Tub man continuing into phone. What? What? Well, we'll put him on for crying out loud. Camera changes focus to foreground. Deputy Kelly shaking his head. Tough customer. Sheriff. Well, I was going to knock off for the day, but I guess I'll hang in for a while. Be back shortly. Page revision. February 17th, 1971. Exterior, alleyway, night, medium shot. Mr. Fazio's station wagon is blocking the alley. He is struggling with a beer barrel on the tailgate of the station wagon, and there are two or three more barrels stacked behind him, completely blocking the alleyway. At this moment, headlights appear, coming down the alleyway very fast. Jeff and Lisa are coming to a screeching halt beside the station wagon. Mr. Fazio. Just a minute, just a minute. I'll be out of your way in a minute. Mr. Fazio comes around on the opposite side of his car and at that moment recognizes Lisa's car. Mr. Fazio continuing, You two! He runs up to Lisa's side of the car. Mr. Fazio continuing, I want you to get out of that car right now and see what you did to my grill. You're a menace to the streets and I'm... Jeff, listen mister, we tried to tell you. Lisa, you, you don't understand. Fazio, don't try to leave. Jeff starts to back up the car. Fazio runs down to the back. Fazio continuing, you try to back this thing up, you'll have to run right over me. Jeff, okay, have it your way. Jeff crams the car into low and advances on the beer barrel ahead and starts shoving. They begin to roll and spew beer all over the place as he pushes his way straight through. Mr. Fazio begins chasing the car, shouting and waving his arms. He can't believe what he is seeing. The barrels are falling, there is beer all over the alley. Interior, Lisa's studio, night, full shot, party. The party is wild as ever with people frolicking and laughing. Joe and Les. Joe. Let's find Lisa and Jeff. Les. Okay. They start to exit. Side angle. Buck and Bob meet them at the door. Buck. We're going to the coffee shop for some ice cream. Bob. Pistachio cocoa with nuts and cherries on top. Joe. Well, when we find Jeff and Lisa, we'll meet you there. They exit. Interior. Stable. Night. Wesley and James. Wesley and James are seated at the table with a huge bottle of Red Mountain wine on it. They have a glass and are in the best of spirits, drunk. Wesley, pouring the last drop in his mouth from the jug. James, I still got a mighty strong thirst. James lifts a hand knowingly, reaches under the table, and produces another bottle of brew. James, Wesley, those tranquil summer nights in Juarez, those days were different then. I remember one senorita, her name was Lupita. He savors the name and takes another swig. Lupita, I think about her. Wesley laughs, a high laugh. Interior, stable area, night close-up, chicken coop. An egg rolls down the chicken coop into the bin, and the blob comes up from beneath camera and envelops it. Pull back to show four long rows of chicken coops, starkly lit, many white individually caged chickens in a row. Very subjective shot, handheld, wide-angle runby as the chickens panic. Interior, stable, tack room, night, Wesley and James. Wesley reacts slightly to the off-screen noise. James waves a hand as if to say forget it. They are drinking. During this, the camera is in the stable area, which is dark, looking into the tack room, which is lighted by a single naked overhead bulb. Camera dollies back, revealing the darkened stable area. Camera pans to the side, and as each eye adjusts to the darkness, we can see some stables and horses and a wall. Interior tack room, Wesley and James. They are drinking and smiling. We hear the off-screen sounds of a horse beginning to snuffle and whinny, then the sound of a horse kicking and whinnying loudly. Wesley slowly gets up and walks to the door of the tack room. He reaches around the corner and hits a light switch. The light goes on. Close up, Wesley's face. He's in shock and disbelief. He turns at the table. Wesley enters the frame in agitation. Wesley. James, something is real wrong with those horses. James, getting up and walking towards Wesley. Wesley, you never saw a woman like Lupita. I mean, she cut a fine figure. Suddenly, the lights go off. The only light is a sliver of moonlight. Wesley, James, get the lantern. James, walking to the lantern. She had firm, round, young. We hear walking and then a sudden loud crash. Two moments of silence pass. James, continuing. But her old daddy, Wesley, come on, James, it's dark in here. James lights the kerosene lantern, 
which gives an eerie half-light to the room. Camera pans with the two as they walk into the stable area. James is holding the lantern head high. The sound of the horse whinny has grown louder. Other horses join in. The original horse is screaming now. As James looks in the direction of that stall, he steps forward. James, what in creation is going on? Give me that fork. James and Wesley's point of view. The blob is attacking a horse. Their eyes grow wide at what they see. James is holding the pitchfork and lantern. Wesley cowers near him. Full shot, James, Wesley, and horse. James holds the lantern and the pitchfork in the other hand like a spear. They face their strange adversary with Wesley frozen. Hold James in panic. James and Wesley's point of view. The horse is down now and clearly covered by the blob, which is still coming in through the cracks in the wall. We can hear the other horses raising cane. Wide shot, James and Wesley. James raises the pitchfork and stabs down with it, and then changes his grip on the handle, tucking the end under his armpit and reaching far down the handle in order to rake with it. Close up of the blob. Part of the blob is on the stall floor in front of the horse. The pitchfork is thrust in this, and James' hand on the handle can be seen at the top of the frame. Suddenly the blob surges up the handle, envelops the hand. James hands the lantern to Wesley. Wesley and James. James is moaning and sobbing in panic. Wesley is struck full in the side by the blob. In panic, he throws the lantern at the blob. The lamp crashes on the blob. Immediately, the kerosene is ignited and the blob bursts into flames. The flames burn on the top of the blob, but it keeps moving unaffected. Camera pans to black as the blob swallows the flames. Stable area, night. The headlights of Jeff's car pull up in front of Jeff's cabin. He switches off the car and sits in the back in the seat. Jeff and Lisa sit there in silence. Lisa, look at the campfire. Close up, devastated Boy Scout camp, done in by the blob. We pan the area during the following speeches. Jeff, voiceover. It's the Boy Scouts. They camp here twice a year. Lisa, voiceover. Sometimes I wish I were ten years old again. Jeff and Lisa. They sit in a moment of rapt silence. Lisa, continuing. Jeff, I'm sorry. I... I don't know whether I'm dreaming. I don't know what's reality. I don't know if I saw what I saw. I just couldn't take the party. Jeff, after a pause. That's all right. Lisa. Oh, Jeff, here's your present. She reaches in the back seat. It's not much, but I think you'll like it. He opens the box, revealing the coat. Gives her the box, and he shrugs on it. Jeff. Oh, Lisa, this is beautiful. Did you make it? Yes, Marion and I made it. Marion. Oh, Jeff. Marion. What happened to Marion and Chester? Jeff holds her. There, there, take it easy. It's all right. One by one, we hear the crickets and tree frogs stop until there's utter silence. A shadow starts to creep down Jeff's face. Lisa's point of view. She can see that it's a piece of the blob. Lisa, half whispering. Jeff? Oh, no, no. Oh, Jeff. There it is. Jeff, don't move. Jeff. What's the matter? What is it? Lisa. Right by your head, on the window. Roll up the window. Lisa rolls up her window, and Jeff starts to roll up his and sees the blob right by his eye. He rolls up the window. The blob cascades down over the window. Jeff turns on the inside light. Jeff, what is it? Lisa, I don't know. It's what got Chester. Jeff turns on the ignition. The car jerks. It won't start well. It coughs and sputters and starts again. He finally gets it started, but it doesn't move. Insert back wheel spinning in red blob. Interior, Lisa's car. The whole outside of the car is full of red blob. A tendril is squeezing through the window. Jeff grabs Lisa and pulls her over to his side. As he begins to pull her, he inadvertently kicks on the air conditioner. Insert Jeff's foot turning on the air conditioning. Exterior, Lisa's car, night. Jeff reaches in the glove compartment and pulls out a flashlight. He hits the tendril with the flashlight and it sticks in it. He tries to pull the flashlight away as the blob begins wrapping itself around the flashlight. Jeff, I'll open the door and plow through it. Lisa, don't let it touch you. Jeff lets go. The blob engulfs the flashlight and drops down onto the dashboard all over the air conditioning duct. It immediately withdraws and turns gray. Jeff, continuing, we gotta get out of here. He starts spinning the wheels again. Insert spinning wheels. Cut to exterior service station, night. Spinning wheels of dune buggy. Pull back to reveal Joe in his gorilla suit and Les pulling up to a service station. There's a car in the station with the gasoline hose stuck in it and the left hand door is open. 
less. Where do you think they went? Joe, I don't know. We'll find them. Without Jeff and Lisa, that party was a bummer. He honks the horn again. Joe, continuing. Hey, how about a little service here? Jeez, where is everybody? He gets out of the car and goes inside yelling. Joe, continuing. Hey, how about a little service? He comes out again and takes the hose out of the car that's already there and starts putting gas into the dune buggy. Les, hey, you can't do that. Wait for the guy to show up. Joe looks at her and laughs. Joe, now come on, are you kidding? Les, Joe. Back to interior Lisa's car. Lisa can't take it anymore. Jeff, I think it's leaving. Yeah, come on, take hold, take hold. Finally, there is a lurching and they break away. They speed out, burning rubber and throwing gravel all over the place. Exterior, service station, night. Joe comes out of the filling station with a case of oil and several cans of STP, loading them into the back of the dune buggy. Less. Hey, listen, Joe, this has gone too far now. Man, a little gas is enough, but taking all that stuff, I just can't go along with that. Joe. Look, Les, don't go along with it. You don't like it? Don't go along with it. Interior, Lisa's car, night. Camera is on the back seat. Lisa is in hysteria, crying. She looks up as they approach the gas station. Lisa, Jeff, look, there's Joe and Les. Jeff, I'll call the sheriff. Exterior, service station, night. Lisa's car whips into the gas station, screeching to a halt. Jeff jumps out of the, and runs to the phone. Les, hey, what's the matter? I thought you were going to Jeff's. Lisa, who hasn't heard a word, has jumped from the car and runs to Les, throwing her arms around her. What the... Lisa, overlapping. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. Les, what's the matter? Lisa, that thing I told you about, it, it was all over the car. It tried to get inside. It nearly got us. Jeff's calling the sheriff. Oh, Les, it was horrible. She drops her face into her hands, then raises her face and looks at Les. Meanwhile, Joe is at the dune buggy putting in oil. Joe has finished with the oil and comes over to get Les. Joe, interrupting. Oh, the monster thing again. Well, listen, we'd better all split up. Everybody go in a different direction and we'll all meet at the less coldly. Joe, get out of here. Joe, oh, come on. Are we going to have fun or are we going to play boogeyman all night? Les, go, go already. I'm going to stay with Lisa. Exterior phone booth, night. As we see Jeff on the phone through the door. Jeff, but would you try, please? Yes, it's very urgent. Yeah, I'll hold on. Exterior gas station, night dune buggy. Joe climbs in carrying his gorilla head. Joe, all right, I'm splitting, and you can just forget you know me. He puts on the gorilla head and peels out. Full shot, front of gas station. The dune buggy pulls out, laying rubber across the island and onto the highway. Les turns to Lisa, puts an arm around her shoulder, and they walk around the car. Medium shot, phone booth. Jeff is still on the phone as Lisa and Les walk into the shot. Jeff, well, you, you can try to reach him? Yeah, he knows me. Jeff turns and looks at Les and Lisa. He puts his hand over the mouthpiece. Jeff, continuing. I can't find where... What? Well, 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 does he know where the sheriff is? Yes, please call him. I'll hold on. Exterior. Highway. Night. The blob is moving onto the pavement. Exterior. Phone booth. Night. Medium shot. Jeff explaining to Les and Lisa. Jeff. The sheriff isn't in his car and the guy who knows where he is is on a break. Lisa, can't you tell somebody there? Jeff shakes his head. Tell us to somebody over the phone? Exterior, highway, night. The blob is in the middle of the highway. Headlights are approaching. Exterior, dune buggy, night, medium shot through the windshield. Favoring Joe as he travels down the highway. Point of view down the highway. The blob can be seen. Rearing up as though sensing the approaching car. Joe slams on the brakes and the tires screech. High side angle. The dune buggy starts to broadside, then slams into the blob, causing the rear end to swing around, changing the direction of the skid as it slides off the highway. Exterior phone booth, night. Jeff is in the booth, still on the phone. Les and Lisa stand by. Jeff into the phone. Yeah, go ahead. The bowling alley? No, that's okay. We'll, we'll go there. Thanks. He slams the receiver down and dashes out of the booth. Jeff continuing. Come on, he's at the bowling alley. The girls run around the car to the other door as Jeff climbs in and starts the car. Their doors slam as Jeff peels out of the station onto the highway. Exterior, Lisa's car, night, long shot, as the car comes down the highway and speeds by. Exterior, Lisa's car, night, through the windshield. 
Less raises an arm and points. Less. Look there! Point of view down the highway. In the ditch, at a crazy angle, the headlights of the dune buggy can be seen. Interior, car, side angle. Jeff slows down fast as they stare into the darkness. Lisa suddenly grabs Jeff's arm. Jeff, that's that thing! Point of view, the dune buggy. It is covered by the red glowing blob. Interior, car, side angle. Jeff jerks the wheel, turning to the side of the highway away from the dune buggy and shifts in the second. Point of view, the dune buggy. Lisa's car is almost directly beside it now and moving slowly by. Joe's gorilla head lies nearby, the mouth open as if it's screaming. The camera zooms in on it. Less over this. Joe! Lisa gasps in horror. Less continuing. Stop! Stop the car! It's them! Jeff steps on the gas, pulling out fast. Les reaches over Lisa, clawing at Jeff. She is hysterical. Les continuing. Stop! We've got to help him! We can't leave him! Lisa is crying as she grapples with Les. During this emotional action, Jeff stops the car out of necessity, for Les has caused quite a commotion. Les, screaming and crying. Let me out! Let me out! Lisa, overlapping. No, Les, no, you can't. It's, it's too late. There's nothing we can do. It would just kill us, too. Over shoulder shot. Blob looking at Dune Buggy and Scout. Les darts from the door of the car. Lisa attempts to follow, but Jeff grabs her. Les reaches the blob. She is wild-eyed. The camera zooms in to Jeff and Lisa. Lisa turns away. Jeff is shocked. He pops the clutch on the car and speeds away. Interior. Coffee shop. Night. Full shot. People sitting and having coffee. Medium shot. Buck, Bob, and Waitress. Buck. What kind of ice cream do you have? Waitress. Vanilla, chocolate, strawberry, pistachio, rocky road. Bob. Let me have two banana splits and a super sundae. Buck. I'll have a chef's salad. Uh, caramel, cocoa sundae, and two cheeseburgers. Waitress. Do you have any money? Buck pulls out a 20. Buck, keep the change, ma'am. We're hungry. Point of view through the windshield. The bowling alley, ice rink, restaurant complex can be seen up ahead. Lisa's car pulls into the parking lot, drives past the bowling alley entrance, and parks in front of the restaurant. Medium shot, Jeff and Lisa. Jeff reaches into his pocket and pulls out some money, which he begins to hand to Lisa. Jeff, go to Carson, check into the Regis Hotel. When this thing is over with, I'll come and get you. Lisa, Jeff, no, no, I'm staying with you. Interior, coffee shop, night. Camera pans to the entrance as Jeff and Lisa enter. They look around. From a table nearby, covered with sumptuous Sundays, Bob, from the party, waves an arm and shouts. Bob, Jeff, over here! Jeff spots him and dashes over to the table. Medium shot, table. Bob is standing up as Jeff arrives at the table. Bob, hey, what happened at the stable? Jeff overlapping. Have you seen the sheriff? Bob. What? Jeff. The sheriff. Lisa arrives behind Jeff at this point. Bob looks at Lisa. Bob to Lisa. Joe get busted in his ape suit? Jeff impatiently grabs Bob's arm, jerking him. Jeff. Hey, I'm not playing games with you. I gotta find the sheriff. Bob gives Jeff a hard stare. He shrugs his arm away from him. Bob. I haven't seen him. Wait, what's... Jeff straightens, look around the room, turns on his heels, and exits quickly. Bob, continuing. Lisa, what's going on? Lisa. Dead. They're all dead. She then runs to catch up with Jeff. Night angle. Cross the tables. Jeff is headed for the other door, which leads to the bowling alley. He yanks it open as Lisa runs to catch up. Bowling alley. Night. The place is crowded with a big league going on. A waitress carrying a tray with drinks and beer bottles crosses the frame. Jeff rushes up and grabs her arm. She starts a balancing act with the tray. Jeff, have you seen the sheriff? Waitress, hey, watch it, Mac. Jeff, have you seen the sheriff? She pulls her arm out of his grasp. Waitress, he was in the coffee shop a while ago, but he left. They run toward camera. Over this, we hear the PA system as the desk man announces items of interest. Desk man. On 17 and 18, Al Fenton of the Woodchoppers just turned in a nice 226. We hear off-screen applause and some whistles and a few people yelling. Reverse angle towards desk. As Jeff approaches it, making his way through the crowd. 
medium shot, the desk. Jeff walks up. He speaks. Jeff to the desk man. I have an announcement to make. Just then a big fat man wearing a bowling shirt elbows up beside Jeff slapping a dollar bill down on the counter. Fat man. Give me some change, will ya? I could have a nicotine fit waiting for that broad to show. I've been here since five without... Jeff interrupting. Listen, I... Fat man overlapping. A partner. She's good, but... He trails off. The fat man looks back at the scores projected on the overhead screen. Jeff losing patience. Look, I have an important announcement to make. The desk man has punched the no sale button on the cash register and has taken the dollar. He digs out four quarters and slips them on the counter. Desk man. You drew Corky, didn't you? Fat man. Yeah. Desk man. Then you wait. <laughs> the fat man takes the quarters and exits. Jeff. No, listen. Desk man interrupting. Cut. No problem. You'll find a pencil and paper down there. He indicates the end of the desk where the microphone is located. The desk man turns and goes in the opposite direction to wait on somebody. Jeff looks left and right, then vaults over the counter. The desk man, his back turned, doesn't see this. Medium shot, microphone and control panel. Jeff enters the scene, picks up the microphone, looks at it, and the control panel. Medium shot of Jeff, with microphone in hand. Jeff, your attention please. Attention everyone, please. I have an important announcement to make. Is Sheriff Jones in the building? Would he please come to the main desk? Assorted people are standing, sitting in booths near the alley. In the alley, some bowlers are arresting their activity to listen. Jeff's voice continuing. I don't wish to alarm you, but it is essential that you evacuate the premises immediately. Medium shot. Desk man. Waiting on a customer at the other end of the desk, he jerks his head around violently. Desk man. What the... Over this, the PA system with Jeff's voice. Jeff, continuing. Please start an orderly exit. Those nearest the exit doors, please hold or prop them open. Interior, bowling alley. Jeff and desk man. The desk man charges up to stop Jeff. Jeff gives him a hard shove and he bumps into the display shelves behind him, knocking over several trophies. Desk man, almost routine yell for a bouncer. Henry! Henry! The desk man scrambles over the counter and runs out. Jeff continues his announcement over this. Jeff, there is danger to everyone in here. Interior, coffee shop. The place is crowded, but everyone is looking up at the speakers and at each other. Jeff's voice. There is plenty of time to get out, but evacuation must start immediately. Ice rink, full shot. A couple of work lights are the only illumination in the empty rink, shining on the bare refrigeration pipes and unfinished carpentry. Jeff's voice. Please don't panic. Just leave the premises and wait for further instructions. Bowling alley. Henry, the assistant manager slash bouncer, rushes onto the scene and grabs Jeff. Jeff's voice. The authorities are being notified. Henry yanks Jeff sideways and the microphone drops, making a horrendous clatter through the loudspeakers. The desk man hits the deck and crawls for the microphone as Jeff sidesteps an attempted bear hug by Henry. Henry spins Jeff around, throws a hammer lock on him, and starts hustling him out from behind the desk. The desk man, is, in the meantime, has grabbed the microphone. Desk man. Ladies and gentlemen, please, accept our apologies. We seem to have a practical joker with us, or a nut. We are sorry for any alarm that announcement may have caused. Please continue with the tournament. Bowling alley. Crowd shot. There is a ripple of laughter among the people in the bowling alley as they resume their activities. End of the desk. As Henry hustles Jeff out toward the swinging door, Lisa runs into the shot. Lisa. Let go of him! You don't understand! Henry calmly switches Jeff to a come-along hold with one hand. Henry. You can both tell it to the manager. Full shot, Lisa, Jeff, and Henry. Henry marches them down the length of the bowling alley. They pass the door to Will Wright's which opens and Bob and Buck come out. They are looking the other way, but Bob spots Jeff, Lisa, and Henry and calls out. Bob, Jeff, what's happening? Jeff and Lisa try to put on the brakes and look back as Henry hustles them along. Jeff looking back over his shoulder. Find the sheriff and get him over here. Camera follows Jeff, Lisa, and Henry. Ahead of them are big double doors. Above the doors is an unlighted neon sign which reads, Polar Palace. In front of the doors is an easel 
with a sign on it which reads, Skating Rink Closed for Remodeling. To the left is a stairway. Manager's Office. Henry opens the door and brings Jeff and Lisa inside. Jeff agitated and out of breath. Everyone in this place is in danger. Don't you understand? A man turns around, revealing it is Mr. Fazio. Bowling alley. Full shot. Bowling area. On one of the approaches, the fat man of the cigarette change is getting ready to bowl. He makes his approach and fires the ball down the alley. In the background, we see his partner, a female gum-chewing jack. Close shot. The pins. The ball arrives, slamming pins into the back of the pit, and the camera moves back into the machinery. New angle. Through the awesomely intricate pin setting and ball return machinery, as it goes through the resetting motions, camera pans to the maintenance area. This is a narrow access way about five feet wide in back of the pin setting machines, and the far end of the last machine we see Al, a maintenance man. He is on the catwalk of the machine, looking down into it. On the floor behind him, oozing in under a door, is the blob. Medium full shot from behind a pin setting machine. Al is squatted down on the catwalk, holding the handle of a crank, which is attached to a motor. He is looking down into the pit. Al. Ready? Mike's voice. Okay, start lowering slow. Camera tilts down and zooms to Mike, the other maintenance man, who is lying on his back on the area where the pins come down underneath the pin setting table. He holds a wrench in each hand. The table begins to descend as Mike positions himself to work on it. Mike. I hope Fazio knows I'm on overtime. I told him enough times these things ought to be welded. Medium shot, back of machine, and Al. His back is towards us as he turns the crank, lowering the table. Behind him on the machine and catwalk is the blob. Mike's voice. Okay, easy now. Bring it down till it's nearly touching me. Al shifts positions to see into the pit better and reaches back with his free hand to steady himself, sticking it right in the blob. His head jerks around and he gasps as he tries to pull his hand free, his other hand involuntarily pulling the crank around. Mike's voice. Hey, Al! Al, for crying out loud, you're squashing me! Al has started to scream off screen as Mike struggles to extricate himself. Mike, continuing, Al, what's the matter, Al? Interior, Sheriff's Station, night, full shot. Three deputies, including Williams and Kelly, and the tub man are in the otherwise empty station. Kelly and the other deputy are at desks. Williams is at the radio. The tub man stands beside Kelly's desk as Kelly writes on a form and passes it to the tub man for his signature. The tub man is wearing county prison issued denims and a pair of shower slippers. Tub man, what's this? Deputy Kelly, just sign it. It says you didn't leave any valuables here. The tub man bends to sign the paper. Over this, Deputy Williams is talking into the microphone on the radio. Deputy Williams, 110, your DMV on HIR 299, clear. Your Mr. Green, no warrant, no want. The radio squawks back. Radio voice, 110, out. Deputy Kelly takes the paper the tub man has signed and hands him a card. Deputy Kelly, okay, you can go home now. Your appearance date is on this card. Don't lose it. And bring those clothes back here by Monday. The tub man puts his hand on the empty pockets of the jeans. Tub man, I'm not going alone. There's something in my house. Deputy Kelly, for the last time, I'm not going home with you. During Kelly's speech, the public entrance doors fly open and our gang rushes in. Bob and Buck are in the lead. The three deputies react, jumping to their feet. Bob and Buck hit the reception desk, both talking at once. Bob, you guys got to come to the bowling alley. Buck, where's the sheriff? Bowling alley, interior, bowling pins. The pins crash and the sweep arm comes down. The automatic pin setter does its thing and returns the ball. Corky and Fat Man. Fat Man claps on her back. Fat Man pressured. Okay, that's an easy one. Pick him up now. We need a mark here. Close up, Corky's ball. Crashing to a stop on the return rack, she picks it up, makes her approach, and bowls. The camera follows the ball down the alley through the pins and into the blob. The blob flows over the ball, keeping it from being returned. The sweep arm comes down halfway and stops. 
Fat Man and Corky. Fat Man with a jump kick. All right, that's the way to go. He steps up to the ball return to get his ball, looks up at the pins, and stops. Fat Man, continuing. That dang machinery. He walks to the reset button and pushes it. Always breaks down and blows my concentration. Woman number one. A few alleys further down, woman number one is standing waiting for her ball to return. Woman number one, screeching ungraciously. Hey, ball return! At another alley, a man is standing. Woman number two comes up to him. What's going on? Man, how should I know? You better not chew up my ball! Bowlers. Camera is at the pin end of the alleys. Bowlers are standing at the head of each alley. An eerie silence has descended. They stand still in puzzlement. Fat Man. Hey, let's get this show on the road. Medium shot. Desk. The desk man is holding down the button on an intercom and shouting into it. Desk man. Hey, Mike. Where the heck are you? What's going on back there? He releases the button. Nothing. Desk man continuing. Oh, wow. He turns and runs to the end of the desk as the camera dollies with him. He reaches the swinging door and steps out as Henry walks into the shot. Desk man to Henry. Come on, everything is broken down and I can't find Mike. They run past the operator seats and down to the alleys. Bowlers. There are two narrow walkways between alleys. The desk man starts down one, Henry down the other. Three or four bowlers are already on these walkways and they have to get around them. Other bowlers walking in the gutters or straddling in the ball return track have moved partway down the alleys, bending down and looking to see if anybody is working on the machinery. Desk man. As he moves forward, camera pans with him as he crouches down, moving crab-like, trying to look into the maintenance areas. Desk man. Mike! Just then there is an appreciable drop in the light, as though half the lights in the alley went off. The desk man stops and straightens, looking up. Full shot of bowlers. All looking up around at the lights that have gone off. Over the crowd murmur, the fat man can be heard. Well, there goes the tournament. Pit area. The blob suddenly gushes from all the pits. Side angle. The desk man and Henry are gobbled up immediately. The next nearest person is woman number one. She has time to gasp and turn to run. The blob goes over her easily with hardly any sound like lava. The blob catches the fat man and Corky next. Fat Man falls forward on his stomach. Any sound he is making is drowned by the crowd, which is now screaming. His face looks as though he is having a heart attack, and the blob covers him. Full shot of the crowd. People pushing into the alleyways between the spectator seats. Some people still standing in shock. Interior, manager's office. Mr. Fazio shouting. Not only are you going to pay for damages on my car and the beer I lost, I'm going to press charges against you for leaving the scene of an accident. Jeff. I'm sorry, sir. You don't understand. Fazio looks up and we hear the off-screen screaming. Fazio. Now what? He moves to go to the door and Jeff and Lisa turn and follow Mr. Fazio to the door as he opens it. The sound of the pandemonium swells as the door opens and they start to step out. Point of view. Bowling alley. Crowd rushing by the front of the manager's door to the closed doors of the ice rink. They knock aside the easel with the remodeling sign and start piling up against the doors. The doors burst open under the weight and people rush into the nearly darkened ice rink. Manager's office. They are all at Fazio's door. Jeff, we'll be trapped in here. Fazio, we'll, we'll get out through the ice rink. Mr. Fazio slams the door, turns and runs across the office. Jeff and Lisa follow. He yanks open a door at the opposite side of the office, which leads to a balcony overlooking the ice rink, and they rush through. Ice rink, night. There are a couple of work lights on, and the evidence of remodeling is everywhere. There is plywood, the railings are removed, and the ice rink itself is in a network of exposed pipes. People are rushing into the area, piling across the pipes. Light streams from the door of, of Mr. Fazio's office. Jeff, Lisa, and Mr. Fazio run in the direction Fazio has pointed to, across a catwalk to a control booth, perhaps 15 feet above the floor. Bowling alley, full shot, favoring coffee shop area. People inside the coffee shop are trying to get out. 
People outside the coffee shop and bowling area are trying to get out. Fire alarm box. Someone breaks the glass and pulls the handle. Reverse angle between the front and side entrances. People in this area are crossing each other's paths. Some discouraged from the front area are trying to go to the side and vice versa. There's a large vending machine which dispenses cold drinks with ice. As the crowd knocks it over, it bursts open, scattering liquid and crushed ice all over. People skate and fall. Reverse angle. The blob surges up the middle of the building, approaching the body of the crowd. The crowd is running, trying to get out a double door. Ice rink, full shot. People at the other end of the ice rink see the blob and begin to scream. At one end of the rink, about ten feet above the floor, is a row of small windows. People are climbing up anything they can find, including each other, to reach these windows. Some are successful, and we hear glass crash as the windows are broken outward. Others are not so lucky and are caught by the blob. Medium shot, end of catwalk at record booth. Jeff, Lisa, and Fazio. Mr. Fazio opens the door and goes in, followed by Lisa and Jeff, who look over their shoulders. Jeff enters, and the light in the booth goes on, shining through the glass front. Interior, control booth. As Jeff enters, he turns and closes the door. The floor of the booth is plywood. The walls and ceiling are of a smooth, solid material with no cracks. The top half of one wall is a large picture window. The door is a tight-fitting one. Inside the booth are a record player, stacks of records, a microphone, an amplifier, a chair, a small metal container, the purpose of which is to store cold drinks. This container has a cord attached, which is plugged into the wall. We hear the sound of off-screen sirens approaching. Mr. Fazio and Lisa look through the glass. Lisa, it's all over the rink. Fazio plugging in a small light. In the name of heaven, what is that thing? Interior, Sheriff's Station. Buck, Bob, and friends are on one side of the rail. Deputies Williams and Kelly and the other deputy with the tub man on the other side. Everyone is shouting at everyone. Tub man. I told you jerks if you would just listen to me. Bob overlapping. What does it take to get you guys to move? Deputy Kelly overlapping. I said take it easy. Annie overlapping. Oh, please, we've got to hurry. Why won't you believe me? Deputy Williams overlapping. I said shut up, all of you. Buck overlapping. We're really in trouble. Bob overlapping and pleading. This is for real, please. Deputy Kelly pointing at Bob. About one more out of you. The above lines are only an indication of the total hubbub. Everyone is shouting and waving arms. At the high point of this, the back door swings open and Sheriff Jones enters. He takes a couple of steps into the room and stops. The deputies look up and a couple of the young people turn. The sheriff shouting, What's going on in here? Everyone becomes silent and hopeful. The rest of our group turns to the sheriff. Bob and Buck start to walk toward him. The sheriff becomes the focal point. Bob, we came here with an emergency and nobody will move. Buck, you got to come to the bowling alley. Slowly, everyone else chimes in over this and the hubbub resumes. The sheriff points a finger at all of them, placing his other hand on his gun. Sheriff, hold it over to that wall, all of you. He points to an area with a bench. The group is shocked into silence. A phone rings. The group turns and moves toward the wall. Bob marches over and plants his hands against the wall and spreads his feet. Sheriff, continuing. Never mind that. Just sit out on the bench. The first phone rings unheeded, then after, five rings. Another phone rings, then five rings simultaneously. Then all 20 lines start ringing at once. In the background, Deputy Williams is answering one phone, asking the party to hold, and then answering another, etc. Tubman. Sheriff, I've been trying to tell... The sheriff snags his head around. What's he doing here? Deputy Kelly jumps forward, grabbing the tub man's arm, and hustles him toward the gate and the railing. Deputy Kelly, come on, buddy, out. Bob has turned around and is sitting down with the others. We hear off-screen sirens. The sheriff points a finger at Bob. Sheriff, you're going to jail, Sonny. You can just about count on that. Points at Buck. You start talking. Before Buck can speak, the sheriff turns to the deputies again. The phones are going crazy, and Deputy Kelly is hurrying over to help answer them. Sheriff, continuing, what is going on with those phones? Deputy Williams has a phone in each hand. He enters the shot to help. The switchboard is lit like a Christmas tree. 
Deputy Williams stands up, holding the other two phones. Deputy Williams. Jonesy, there's something going on at that bowling alley. They all exit. Interior, ice rink, and bowling alley. Night. More panic shots in interior, ice skating rink, and interior bowling alley. Exterior, ice rink. Police cars arrive with sirens going. People pointing, running around. Everyone hysterical. Exterior, end of ice rink with windows. Night. A young man is crouched in a broken window. Medium shot. Sheriff. Sheriff standing by fire chief's car as he raises his bullhorn. Sheriff. Don't jump from the windows. We are sending help. He swings around, pointing the bullhorn in another direction. Sheriff continuing. Get a ladder unit over there. The man, not waiting, jumps from the window. Camera pans with this. Interior, booth, night, three shot. Jeff, Lisa, and Mr. Fazio. The sound of heavy truck engines and off-screen sirens and sheriff's bullhorn can be heard in the off-screen distance. The trio stands listening. Sheriff's voice. If anyone is still inside, do not jump. We're sending help. Over this, sound effects of wood chopping. Jeff looks up at the ceiling and around the walls. Lisa looks alarmed. Lisa. Jeff, make him stop. It will get loose. Jeff looks around the room. POV showing desk turntable microphone. Another angle showing a shelf with PA equipment, amplifiers, preamp, tape deck, and controls. Jeff. Mr. Fazio, will that amp work as a PA? Fazio. Yes, it should. Insert control panel. Fazio's hand turns the volume all the way up. Full shot. Jeff, Lisa, and Fazio. Jeff has grabbed the microphone. Music starts to blare at a fantastic volume. They jump. Lisa grabs her ears and Fazio leaps to the control panel, flipping a toggle switch. The music grinds to a stop. Jeff turns back to the microphone. Jeff. Hello? We hear the reassuring echo of the loudspeakers. Crowd reaction, etc. Jeff's voice. This is Jeff Hartford. We're in the record booth in the ice rink. Can you hear me? Don't break in. If this thing gets loose, there's no stopping it. Sheriff into the bullhorn. How many people are in there? Jeff's voice into Mike. Three of us. Myself, Lisa Clark, and Mr. Fazio. We're the only ones left. The others escaped or were killed. I don't think it can get to us here, but we can't get out. Exterior, ice rink. Full shot, crowd, fire engines, chief's cars. An ambulance has arrived. We can hear approaching off-screen sirens. Sheriff Adlib's instructions into Bullhorn. Another angle across Fire Chief's car at the end of Ice Rink. An ambulance is pulled up here. The man who jumped from the window can be seen holding his ankle, and the attendants start to put him on the stretcher. Interior, record booth. Jeff puts down the mic, turns and moves to Lisa. Jeff, they will get us out of here. Jeff puts his arm around Lisa. Interior, Ice Rink, close up, looking down the ladder. The blob, defying gravity, is ascending the ladder. Camera pans to the wall where the blob is also creeping up at a steady rate. Exterior, ice rink. Sheriff Jones. Sheriff into bullhorn. Tell us the nature of the thing. Police and firemen are pushing the crowd back. Cars nearest to the building are being moved out as deputies with flashlights wave the drivers towards the exits. Over this, we hear the loudspeakers. Crowd reactions. Things are progressing. Jeff's voice. It feeds on living things. It's grown to an enormous size. A few hours ago it was the size of a man. Now it's covering most of the rink. Exterior, roof of ice rink. The tops of two ladders can be seen at the edge of the rounded roof, and firemen with ropes and tools are moving around on top of the roof. POV shot, booth, seen through hole in the roof. Jeff's voice. It's like a giant one-celled animal. It can move fast, squeeze through tiny cracks. Interior, record booth. All three are stuffing clothing under the door. Unbeknown to them, we see a tentacle of blob through the window. Jeff sees this and grabs the mic. Please hurry. In a few minutes, we won't be able to get out. It's starting to completely envelop the booth. Exterior, parking lot. Kelly and Sheriff. Sheriff walks up to Kelly. Kelly, indicating the ice rink. Our first responsibility is to get those people out of there. Sheriff. We kill the thing here, it'll be no problem. Kelly, and what if we can't kill it? If it gets to those people, it'll be through with that place. He points to the walkie-talkie. There's a hospital three blocks that way. A block that way, there's a rest home. If that thing decides to leave the ice rink, Sheriff, 
Get your ride gear and see what we can do. Interior record booth. Jeff pokes the last of Mr. Fazio's tie into a crack and turns. Camera pans across the window, which is half covered by the blob, and arrives at Lisa. She is up on the table on her hunches in order to see over the blob. Mr. Fazio. What's going on? What's going on? Interior, bowling alley. Sheriff Jones and Deputy Kelly with shotguns walk stealthily through the bowling alley. Interior, record booth. Mr. Fazio's feet. At his feet, the blob is oozing up through the planks in one bubble. Medium shot, Mr. Fazio. Jeff dashes to him and pulls Mr. Fazio away from that area. Camera pans with them as the three cower in the opposite corner near the door. Mr. Fazio. No, it's going to kill us! Jeff snaps his head around in reaction and grabs Fazio's arm. Jeff, Mr. Fazio! Mr. Fazio overlapping. It's gonna kill us! We can't get out of here! We're gonna die! Jeff, Fazio, stop it! Mr. Fazio screaming. We'll never get out of here! We're gonna die! We're gonna die! I don't wanna die! Jeff looks around the room for a means of defense. Interior bowling alley. Sheriff and Kelly. They approach the doors to the rink. Ad-lib conversation about be careful, etc. Point of view, shot from the booth. Over the blob, we see the ice rink door open, revealing Sheriff Jones and Deputy Kelly, and slowly advance, armed to the teeth. They are frightened. Ad-lib dialogue. Wide angle, blob, Sheriff and Kelly. They fire into the blob. This has no effect whatsoever. Interior, ice rink. Sheriff and Kelly run out. Kelly slips and falls. Tight two-shot. Half of Kelly's body is out of the frame, covered by the blob, and Sheriff grabs Kelly's arms and tries to pull him out of it. Kelly is in anguish. The Sheriff, realizing that he's not making any headway, lets go and runs. Close up of Sheriff. He runs out, slamming the door. He is nauseous. Interior, booth. They react. Exterior, parking lot. Sheriff Jones runs to Deputy Williams. Sheriff. Bullets have no effect at all! Sheriff removes his hat and rubs a sleeve across his forehead. Interior, record booth. Jeff looks around for some means of defense against the encroaching blob. His eyes catches something off screen. He steps over to a little freezer refrigerator, which is humming, and opens the lid. Inside we see some Coke bottles, a plastic bin full of machine-made ice cubes, and a paper bag containing who knows what. He drops the lid and stoops and pulls the cooler's electrical cord from the wall plug. He puts his shoulder to the cooler and yanks hard on the cord, ripping it from the cooler. Hastily, he unwraps the insulation and separates the wires. He moves toward camera, the bared wire in his hand. Jeff, over his shoulder. Lisa, when I tell you, plug that wire back into the wall. Lisa, okay. Lisa takes the plug end of the wire and holds it near the wall receptacle, ready to plug it in. Jeff advances to camera, still holding the bared wire. Jeff, now! Lisa plugs the cord into the wall receptacle, and Jeff shoves the bared wire into the blob. There is a crackle and flashing light, indicating an electrical impact. The blob continues to ooze up through the crack. Jeff pulls back and stares at the small advancing bubble of the blob. He throws the wire down at it. They crackle and fizz. He scoots over to the plug, looking back at the blob, finally unplugs it and throws the plug down on the floor. A heavy sigh escapes from Lisa, Part relief because she is afraid of electricity, part despair because it hasn't affected the blob. Jeff reacts to this and moves over to her. Jeff, continuing. Hey, we're not alone. There's a lot of people out there. Bill said they'd get us out of here, and they will. Jeff grabs the microphone. Exterior, parking lot. Jeff's voice. It's oozing through a crack in the floor. I stuck an electrical wire in it. It didn't have any effect at all. Interior, record booth. It is now as big as a man's head. Medium shot, Lisa and Mr. Fazio. Lisa and Fazio are crouched on the table, taking up the room. Lisa's nerves are badly frayed. Lisa, oh, Jeff, it's getting so big. Please, please, get up on the ice chest. Full shot, Jeff checking the stuffing around the door. He turns and looks at the blob, then looks at Lisa and nods. He goes to the ice chest and pops up on it. The thing tips as though a leg or caster were missing and comes crashing down. Jeff falling, his leg going right at the blob. Lisa screams. Ice and bottles come flying out of the chest. Something hits the amplifier. It sparks and goes dead. Some of the bottles slide up against the blob. The blob turns slightly gray and pulls down through the crack. 
close-up, Jeff. His breath coming rapidly. His face lights with the sudden realization. He picks up some of the ice. Jeff. That's it! The cold! The cold! Medium shot. Jeff's voice continuing. It can't take the cold. Remember in the car? Lisa. What? Jeff. Your air conditioning! Three shot. Mr. Fazio, Lisa on table, and Jeff on floor. Jeff continuing. In the car! It left your car because the air conditioner was on. It hates cold! Jeff jumps up and grabs the microphone. Jeff continuing into Mike. We've got it! It can't stand the cold! We can freeze it! We can turn on the rink! Maybe it will work fast enough to stop it! Hello? Oh no, this thing is broken! The mic's gone dead! Mr. Fazio is still sitting on the table. Lisa is down, standing beside Jeff. Jeff to Mr. Fazio. How long does it take? Mr. Fazio. Uh, it's very fast. It starts freezing almost instantaneously. Jeff, how do we turn it on? Close up, Mr. Fazio. Mr. Fazio. There's a master switch on the wall. It's uh, in a metal box under the windows. Exterior, parking lot, sheriff and crowd. Dust is falling from above. Williams runs into the shot. Williams to sheriff. We got a new problem. The front wall is ready to go from the weight of that thing. Sheriff into the bullhorn. What's going on in there? Interior record group. The blob was halfway up the window. Jeff turns to Lisa. Jeff. Lisa, keep an eye on the floor. We don't want it to sneak up on us now. The off-screen bullhorn goes on again, and Jeff reacts, turning to the window. Sheriff's voice. You people in there, can you hear me? Jeff. To Lisa and Fazio. You'll be safe in here. I'm going to turn the rink on. Lisa and Fazio ad-lib concern. Jeff looks around the room. He sees the door is not going to be accessible, steps up on the table, and exits through a trap door in the roof. Interior, ice rink, low full shot. We see Jeff exiting from the top of the booth. The blob is all around the booth. Jeff climbs up a rope. Jeff's point of view. The blob covers the booth and starts up the rope for him. Side angle, Jeff on the scaffolding. The blob is almost up to him. He jumps to the next scaffolding and the blob pulls down the rope in the scaffolding which falls past the booth. Exterior, parking lot, sheriff and crowd. Sheriff to Williams. Those people are gone inside. I want you to get all the gasoline you can. We're going to burn the building down. I don't want to take any chances. Interior, ice rink. Jeff is crawling along girders. Sheriff's voice. All right, move those people out of here. Get those cars away. I want this place cleared out now. Jeff, what are they doing? Interior, record booth, full shot. The blob is sending long fingers into the booth through the cracks around the door. Lisa and Mr. Fazio are huddled in the opposite end of the booth. Suddenly the whole booth tilts, the end away from the door dropping about 10 degrees, accompanied by the sound of ripping, creaking wood and a loud thunk. Fazio is thrown to his knees and Lisa screams. The Coke bottles roll down the floor. Interior, ice rink. Jeff is standing on a scaffold and he reacts to the booth's tipping. Jeff screaming, Lisa! Jeff grabs a rope and swings past the blob to the floor near the switch. As he does this, the blob surges up at him, almost catching him in the midst of his swing. Exterior, parking lot. Various shots of people siphoning automobiles, filling buckets, cans, even beer cans with gasoline. Sheriff Jones picks up the bullhorn. Sheriff into bullhorn. All right, everybody, I want to coordinate this. Interior, booth. Fazio and Lisa are freaked. Sheriff's voice. Those people in the ice skating rink are dead. We have to stop this thing. We must all work together. Interior, ice rink. Jeff is now at the switch box. He's trying to open it and realizes that it's locked. He runs and gets a two by four and tries to get it open. Sheriff's voice. We're burning the building down. It's the only chance we have to stop it. Please, everyone, cooperate. Jeff, as he attempts to open the switch, screams, No! No! Stop! They don't hear him. He opens the box, pulls the switch, and runs out. Interior, record booth. Fazio and Lisa are hysterical. The blob, which is covering the window, suddenly breaks the window and then stops in mid-course. It grays and withdraws. Interspersed with the above, various cuts to the blob graying and pipes freezing inside the ice rink parking lot full shot the sheriff is standing by with a flaming twist of newspaper in his hand about the torch the gasoline soaked building pots and the boy scouts enter the scene pots panning and out of breath 
Sheriff, Sheriff, it was terrible. Come quick. Some monstrous thing has invaded the town. He has grabbed the sheriff's arm, preventing the sheriff from starting the flames. Sheriff, we got it bottled up now. We're going to kill it. Jeff runs out the door. Jeff shouting, Stop! Stop! We've stopped it! The crowd reacts. Interior ice rink. Sheriff Jones, Deputy Williams, and Jeff run in through the main exit simultaneously with Fazio and Lisa scampering down the catwalk from the booth on the opposite side of the building. The frozen blob dominates the center of the screen. They are followed by newsmen carrying cameras and lights. High wide angle. Jeff gingerly kicks the blob which is frozen on the ice rink. The crowd is hushed. The cameras and lights are on. Jeff then takes a step and walks out onto the center of the blob and looks down at it. Medium shot. Fazio, Lisa, Sheriff. They react. Close up on Jeff. Jeff. Come on out, it's okay. Side angle. Lisa walks out and joins Jeff on the blob. We stay on them for a beat in silence. Tight two shot, Fazio and Sheriff. They also gingerly walk out onto the blob. Camera pans slowly from them to the tub man and other remaining principals who are surrounded by cameras and lighting equipment of newsmen. Camera pans slowly from this to a section of the blob which is gurgling and obviously still alive. We stay on this as we superimpose end credits. Fade out. The end. All right, are we ready for this conference now? Well, you've got to name the new blob picture. Carol Lindley, Godfrey Cambridge, and Shelley Berman are in it. Is it the same old blobby red Vaseline stuff that eats people and spits out the clothes? Yeah, that's it. So what do we call it? The same old blobby red Vaseline stuff that eats people and spits out How the clothes. How about bless the beast in the blob? I just love it. Fiddler on the blob. Gidget meets the blob. Guess the blob's age and <laughs> win your life. Blob squad. Oh, the blob's a slob. Beyond the valley of the planet of the blob. Whatever the happens to baby, happen on the way to the blob. 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 The blob. blob. The blob. Golly gee, kids, be the first in your neighborhood to have your own name the blob picture contest. Son of Blob has already been taken. Oh, yeah, the first prize is one week in Burbank. Second prize, two weeks in lovely downtown Burbank. Son of Blob rated GP. Because everyone gets killed with their clothes on. The Blob is back with a new appetite for Godfrey Cambridge, Carol Lindley, Shelley Berman, Robert Walker, and a bunch of other finger-licking good people. So see the new Blob picture, Son of Blob. The Blob, better known as the Gulp of Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> It'll make you jingle in your jeans. Widescreen color, rated GP. Because everybody gets killed with their clothes on. An unsolicited testimonial. What do you think of the new Blob picture? You mean the one where they discovered Steve McQueen? No, this is the new Blob movie, Son of Blob. The Blob is back with a new appetite for Godfrey Cambridge, Shelley Berman, and Carol Lindley. Son of Blob, a super new picture. I can't believe he ate the whole thing. Widescreen color, ready GP. The Blob eats Dallas. And Fort Worth, too. There's nothing like a little dessert. Son of Blob. In widescreen color, rated GP. You can have your own name, the Blob Picture Party. Son of Blob has already been taken. Son of Blob, rated GP. Everyone gets killed with their clothes on. The Blob eats Dallas. <laughs> Son of Blob, a super new picture. I can't believe he ate the whole thing. White screen color, rated GP. Dallas, Fort Worth, the Blob eats it. There's nothing like a little dessert. Son of Blob, in widescreen color, rated GP. is back in a horrifying new adventure as the blood-red creature rolls over and swallows everything in its path, consuming human flesh on contact, threatening to envelop the earth unless destroyed. Beware the blood. Beware Godfrey Cambridge. Beware Robert Walker. Beware Carol Lindley. Beware Shelley Berman. Beware Larry Hagman. Nothing can stop it. Not fire. Not water. Not even bullets. Don't miss Son of Blob.
in blood-curdling color. Rated PG, all ages admitted. Godfrey Cambridge, Robert Walker, Tara Lindley, Larry Hagman, Shelley Berman. Beware, the blob, as the blood-red creature rolls over and eats everything in its path. See Son of Blob, widescreen color, rated PG. The Blob is back in a horrifying new adventure. And you are there. Startled, stunned, terrified, as the blood-red creature rolls over and eats everything in its path. We're going to burn the place down. I can't take any chances. Beware the Blob. <laughs> Starring Robert Walker, Gwyn Guilford. First thing you do when you get home, you go fishing. You know that's not the first thing I did when I got back home. Beware Godfrey Cambridge. Beware Carol Lindley. Please, please. Beware Shelley Berman. You would like a haircut? Yeah, be four hundred dollars. Beware the Blob. Larry Hagman and his pals tried to stop the Blob with a pitchfork. Beware the Blob. Consuming human flesh on contact. I don't suppose you got any identification. Nothing can stop it. Not fire, not water, not even bullets. Don't move. What do you mean? Huh? That thing. That's it. Oh! Oh! oh. See, son of Blob. Oh. Ah, it's the Blob! Rated PG. All ages admitted. Oh, look out! Ah, it's the Blob! <laughs> the Blob is back in a horrifying new adventure. And you are there as the blood-red creature rolls over and swallows everything in its path. Beware the Blob. Beware Godfrey Cambridge, Robert Walker, Gwyn Guilford, Carol Lindley, Shelley Berman, Larry Hagman and his pals. Beware the Blob, consuming human flesh on contact. Nothing can stop it, not fire, not water, not even bullets. Beware the Blob. Color. Rated GP. All ages admitted. Son of the Wob. first and only film I ever directed. <laughs> it was made for $87,000 and it's made about $40 million. None of I got, I just... <laughs> but uh, I was in the... Uh, my wife made jacuzzis and I had a, a neighbor in Malibu and we were sitting in the bath together and he says, how would you like to, to direct uh, uh, The Blob, a sequel to The Blob? And I said, of course. And that's how it happened, in the bath. And then uh, I, I, would catch, I would catch people walking down the, the, uh, on the beach there, and I'd say, you want to be eaten by the blob? <laughs> and many of them said, sure, they were out of work, too. So, <laughs> so uh, we got uh, Godfrey Cambridge, who was a wonderful actor, and Burgess Meredith, Carol Lindley, and uh, Shelley Berman. And they all did it for scale. I said, listen, I'll tell you what, you give me a day uh, at scale, and when you do your movie, I'll give you a day at scale. Well, luckily, they did never make any more movies. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that, that was the history of that show. We did it in 15 days, and uh, it's, it's not uh, what you'd call, uh, I, 
iconic film <laughs> by any means, but it was kind of fun. Hi, Steve. So, you're a big fan of Son of the Blob, huh? or Son O' Blob, as we like to call it. You know, it's very uh, interesting. I had just been talking, hadn't talked about it or thought about it in years, and I had just been talking about it that week, uh, a week ago. And then a friend of mine from Chicago called, and he knew um, the actor who played my boyfriend in, um, you know, who gets eaten with me in the drain pipe in Glendale. And, uh, and then you, so that's three's a charm. So um, I can share this with you, which is a really fun story. I mean, Larry Hagman, fabulous, fabulous cast, you know, just wonderful. Uh, I just worked on it for like two days, maybe, until I got eaten. And um, so, you skip to a couple of years after, and I'm on the Carson, uh, the Johnny Carson show for the first time, The Tonight Show. And I tell the story about, you know, he asked me what I've been doing. And I, you know, I said, well, I, I did this little movie called, uh, that was directed by Larry Hagman called uh, Son of Blob. He said, really? I said, yeah, I was re eaten by the blob in a drain pipe in Glendale. And because of that, I got asked, back over and over to do The Tonight Show. He loved that so much that I got eaten by the blob in a drain pipe in Glendale. And I believe my one line is, or one of my three lines is, no, really, what's that behind you? And the cop says, oh no, I'm not falling for that old gag or whatever it is. And it's a very funny, I can see why it's a cult classic. I think I saw the scene that I did like one time maybe. And, um, and I forget the guy, hang on, let me ask, what was the guy's name who played my boyfriend? It's Randy Stonehead or something Randy like that. Stoneman, I think, yeah. playing my, my, uh, boyfriend who's playing the guitar. And he's the one who's friends with, uh, my friend Tom, who's an actor in, um, Chicago, who had, you know, had called me that last week and said that. So isn't that funny? Anyway, thank you for um, asking about that. It brings back pleasant memories because it was a lot of fun to do, as you can imagine. And um, I hope you have a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Holidays, um, and just take care of yourself. And we're going to have a fun, prosperous, happy-filled New Year coming up. Okay. Okay, Steve. Wait. Okay, greeny. All right. The blob wasn't green. I think it was red. All right. Over and out, greeny. Bye-bye.